Let's check out how to do a trimmed surface. In one of the videos that I did about geometry nodes, a user had commented about how to do a trimmed surface essentially, which is not the lines extending all the way up, but having a specific distance away from one of the curves. So we're gonna do this in geometry nodes and then compare it to Rhino and Grasshopper. So how does this work? So we've got two curves. We have a bottom curve and a top curve. And if we move one of the curves, everything adjusts itself. And then we're drawing these perpendicular lines that you see from one curve to the other. Afterwards, we're getting a specific distance that we're trimming with. So if we reduce that distance, you see that everything changes accordingly between those two curves over here. So let's get into how we're going to build this now. File and the further description is available on Patreon in case you're interested. First, we grab our nerves paths in here. So we have nerves path and nerves path.001. So that's the top and that's the bottom. Then we're resampling the curves. This is to make sure that each of those curves has the same number of points. And that's why we're using the integer. So if we change the integer number, we change the number of subdivisions. After that, we need to create a curve line. This is just one curve line, right? Which is over here. It's this little guy over here. And then we're distributing this as instance on points along the curves on one of them. And we can change the position. It doesn't matter because the end point we need to adjust separately. So we're doing that here with this set position. So how does this work? So we have to set the position of these endpoints that you see along this curve. So we need to use that second curve after it's being resampled. And we use a node that's called sample index. So we want to change this to vector and then use the position value. And then we want to index half of each index. Why is that? Because the indices are a little bit different between the two kinds of selections, right? So in here, we're skipping an index, but that index still exists with these perpendicular points. And that's why we have to divide this by half to make sure. In, and if we mute this by pressing M, you see it doesn't quite work, right? Because it's skipping an every other index. So that's why we have to divide this by two. So with this node, then we set the position of the selection of the endpoints along that edge. Next step is trimming the curve. So there's a trim curve node that we use and it trims based on the specific length that we want. We can even trim on the other side, but right now we don't really care, but if we wanted to, we could do that, right? So we have a set distance from the top and the bottom. So I'm going to leave that at zero. And once we're done with the trimming of the curve, we have the geometry in there. So what do we do next? So we have to set the position of the grid and the grid is just a very, simple grid, it doesn't matter what it looks like because we're then going to adjust the position of all the vertices. Now it's important that we have the same number of vertices as we have in our geometry. And that's why you see how vertices X is connected to the integer that we have here. So it essentially has the same amount of data. And the other one stays at two. If we do three, it gets all kinds of messed up because the vertex index is wrong. So this has to stay at two. This size doesn't matter. So what do we do next? We set the position. So we've got our position here and we don't need a selection because we're changing the position of everything. And we use sample index again, this time from these perpendicular curves. So all these perpendicular curves go in there. We grab the position, which we're sending through and we make sure that we use every index. The indices in this case are all correct in the sense that this is a zero then this is a one a two, a three, a four, a five, six, seven, and eight. So that's exactly how we would build this kind of grid over here. And then we join the geometry. We don't really need to do that. I'm just doing this in this case to be able to visualize the lines a little bit better. And we've got our final result. So how does this compare to doing it in Rhino and Grasshopper? So that's the script that we have in Grasshopper that allows us to produce this. As you can see, it's a little bit shorter than what we have here in Geometry Notes. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So let me explain to you how it works in Grasshopper. So again, we grab our two curves, which are here, and you can see them how we divide those curves, the exact same thing we were doing in there. But then Instead of creating a line and then having to position at one of the ends, we just grab those points and directly input them. So the line start point is here and the line end point is along this curve over here. Once we have that, we evaluate again for a specific length. And we use that parameter to break up our curves or what they call shatter. So instead of having one line or one curve in this case, we have two depending on where that break is. So if we change that, it also adjusts itself. And from here, because we have two curves per each line, we only take the first item. So we have this list item element. So if we go and select one in here, 
and you see we flip the indices so we select the other part so this is an incredibly useful node that everybody that uses geometry nodes uses it all the time and if we go at zero you see how we flip and then we just loft that's right it's as simple as that there's no way to adjust the vertices and so on it lofts between those two but it's a little bit different right if we were to construct a mesh within grasshopper we would probably do it in a fairly similar way where we have to make sure that the vert order is similar which it is as we would do in geometry nodes so that's the setup in grasshopper which again it's a little bit faster in a way because it uses less nodes so there's more less manipulation of data and our setup in grasshopper thanks to all the patrons that are sponsoring this content and the files are available in case you'd like to become a patreon as well by the way if you want to learn how to use geometry nodes for architectural design check out my blender architecture Masterclass course which takes you from zero to hero in the shortest way possible showing you how to model how to design how to use geometry nodes and how to render all of it and I have a brand new course which is called staggered forms and with it you can design parametrically any architectural form with modifiers and of course geometry nodes. And then we learn how to create architectural concepts. I designed it for architects like myself, but I think it might be quite useful for people that are into game design, into any kind of art really, because architectural backdrops are quite important. So thanks very much for watching this. And if you have any comments, let me know and I'll try to address them. See you next time. Get it right, get it right. One is called Grasshopper and it's part of Rhino and the other one is called Geometry Nodes, which is part of Blender. Ah.